Okay, let's uh, move on to game number three. I'm hoping this is my strongest read of any league in Europe this weekend. It's Sociedad versus Real Vallecano. Sociedad minus 170. There's a parlay piece if you want. Uh, Real plus 550. I think that it should be plus 950. Draw plus 275. I go back to the home side again. Minus 1. Minus 105 to score twice. Minus 113. The under or over is set at 2. Telling you straight away that maybe Real not to score is an isolated bet as well. At minus one. One one seven. Paco, take it away. But it, for me, Sociedad winning this game is one of my strongest selections through the European leagues that kick off this weekend. Yeah, especially as it's been quite a uh, you know interesting summer for some of its uh, players. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. Mikel Merino, who uh, shouldn't play this game. You know, if things go according to the the, the plan, uh, he should be leaving for the Premier League in the in the following hours. Um, and by the way, Thubi Mendis is staying. You know, it, we have the, the two opposite, you know, yeah. uh, ends of the, of the at this point, of, of the ambitions of, of each player. You know, Thubi Mendis just wants to stay at home and become a star. And he's already one, but, you know, become one of the leaders of the team here in 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 Spain. And, and Mikel Merino, after, after his, you know, massive goal in the quarterfinal against uh, Germany and being a, an important role player in, in, in the Spain national team, uh, you know, he's bound for more ambitious challenges, I believe, in the, in the Premier League. But, yeah, regarding the, the team overall, they have one of the advantages which is uh, massive in my view, which is um, staying with the same manager and the same plan and the same yeah, structure. Stability. And, yeah. they, and they were underwhelming last year at certain times. They frustrated so many times. Winning positions ended up drawing. Uh, very, very tough to score against, but they didn't. They weren't ruthless enough. And I hope that they're on the front foot a little bit more, Paco. Yeah, because I think that Imanol Alguacil, uh, as you said, was very frustrated last season. They were very close of getting far in the, in the Copa del Rey. They were just unable to to reach to the to the final game. And later in La Liga, they fell short of their ambitions of once again repeating in the Champions League. But overall, they find themselves with the uh, usual suspects. Oyarzabal, uh, Bryce, uh, Zubimendi, Takekubo, Barrenechea. Those, those guys are going to be there definitely and let's see how they play without uh Lenormand which is going to be one of the newest uh, shortcomings for them at the back remember that he was signed by Atletico de Madrid a, a couple of of weeks ago and uh, regarding Rayo Vallecano once again the the big issue has been uh, after the Iraola era of of football uh not being 100% reliant on what Easy Palazón decides to do you know that guy really knows how he's an absolute baller, but he's very, I would say, very uh, unstable. Not, not he hasn't had the consistency that he found under Iraola for quite a long time. Uh, they will start Camello, uh, which is you know a great, great striker who was massive. If you saw the game in the in the final game of the Olympics against France, with a couple of goals in the in the in the final against the French, and and he's an absolute baller. I I love this guy. I think he's uh, have plenty of potential. But I don't know Mbarba, uh, Bayou. It's a squad with not that. Um, I think that going they're going to f- uh, fall short of their expectations once again. And be closer to the bottom of the of oh, the yeah. of the more league than, than the, yeah, yeah more than that. I, I we're we're talking about a ten to fifteenth spot for Rayo Vallecano. Whereas I think Real Sociedad are bound to fight for the top five, and they should definitely be, uh, re- depending on what they are able to do with their striker. Um, because last season, for example, we saw a couple of highlights here and there of Umar Sadiq after being signed two years ago and um, getting injured and so on, but. They really need to step up their game offensively. And if they lose Mikel Merino, I think that they're going to find it very tough. Yeah, listen, I've got Vallecano closer to 15th than I have 10th. This is a side. There's a couple of teams or maybe one or two teams in each league that I want to jump on with my own personal professional opinion before the books latch on. Brighton being one in the, in the Premier League and Vallecano, Pavlos, being the one in La Liga. Yeah, Vallecano, they were poor on the road last season. I'm not really sure, you know, 
this being a first home match of the season for Real Sociedad, no matter what changes they've done in the off-season and no matter who is playing, uh, you know there's going to be a packed stadium uh, and the Basques are always, you know, very loud, very passionate for, uh, you know, for their home team. Um, Rayo Vallecano, last season, they only beat, what, like, they had three away wins. They beat uh, Almeria. Everybody beat Almeria last season. They beat Granada. Uh, they beat Las Palmas. And uh, that's it. So they were not very good on the road. Uh, they were really bad, actually. And, um, you know, if you look at the at the history between the two sides, uh, they were actually both draws last season. But there is a very good reason uh, for both draws. Actually, the, the draw in Real Sociedad, uh, in this venue, last season was a goalless draw, but it was, uh, I think it was like three or four days after the cup quarterfinals where Real Sociedad, uh, they beat Celta in that match. So they used their starters in the in the quarterfinal and uh, then they were tired and they rotated it in their next, you know, match in the weekend, which was this one. Uh, goalless draw against Radio Vallecano. It was a, just a really bad game. Um, so take that result with a grain of salt. And they almost beat them on the road. Uh, they were holding a 2-1 lead uh, till the end of the match. They considered a goal in the stoppage time. So, um, if you ask me, Real Sociedad should have won at least one of those two matches under different circumstances. So, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how Real Sociedad are going to be because they lost some uh, key members and they're about to lose another key member in every line. So, um, you know, offense, defense and uh, midfield. But again... Uh, if you go by the logic that Rayo Vallecano didn't really do that many transfers, um, they have the same coach who didn't really move the needle uh, since he came. And Real Sociedad, they're at home. Basque team, give me a Basque team at home any day of the week. But uh, this is one of the matches where I didn't want to get involved, but I definitely see Real Sociedad winning this uh, one way or the other. Now, I'm, I'm not really sure if they're going to blast Rayo Vallecano by 3-4 to nil. Real Sociedad are not a team that does that. Uh, maybe we see like a typical Real Sociedad win and under three and a half, you know, that that's, you know, that's what we we are used to seeing. So uh, I think this is a win, might not come easy, but uh, if you want to take the money line, I think it's safe. If you want to take the minus, uh, what's the spread, minus one, yeah, maybe, maybe you get a push. Yeah, it's a free hit. Yeah, I, listen, I, I, I've got uh, basically got a little bit against you. I've got no sweat, three nil. Uh, and that brings in the Vallecano not scoring. I'm all over Sociedad. I think that Sociedad uh, in La Liga and Milan in Serie A is your best parlay. I think that they're the two hanging fruits. Uh, and I will obviously die by that sword. Let's have a little look at the official picks, please. Because I've gone Sociedad, money line, uh, parlay uh, is the first leg of my parlay as well. And that plays, I think it's going to pay about plus 140 for the opening weekend. So <laughs> We'll